Yes? Yes, I need three, I need at least the three equations, right? So I, I have to cancel out this, cancel out this, and I need this term to turn out to be exactly what I need. Basically, I need uh, this row to add up to the second derivative. So I have three equations. I only have two things to play with. I have C1 and C2. I need three things to play with. So how do I add another thing to play with? Yes, I add another UI term. I use the I minus 1. I use the UI. How about adding another term? That is UI plus 1, right? Let's see, plus C3 times UI plus 1. OK, now I'm going to do the same Taylor series expansion. UI plus 1 is going to be equal to UI plus delta x times the first uh, derivative plus delta x squared over 2 times the second order derivative uh, plus uh, delta x cubed over 6 third order derivative plus another o delta x to the fourth right so again if I have a uh, coefficient I'm going to have C3 multiply down everything. Uh, don't need this. C3, right? So now I really have, uh, yeah, actually, I need to basically have this to be 0, and this turns out to be uh, just the, the second uh, derivative at i. So I have three equations and uh, three unknowns. And again, um, you can solve these equations by manipulating them. But like for me, it's actually easier if I just turn it into a matrix form. All right. And in, in this case, uh, the right hand side of the matrix is C1, C2, C3. I want a matrix that is multiplied by C1, uh, C2, C3, and uh, right. And uh, let me actually, because everything is multiplied by delta x uh, square, let me just uh, uh, say c1 delta x square, c2 delta x square, c3 delta x square. This is my unknown. And I'm multiplying. Um, the first row is uh, 1, 1, 1, right? I want to multiply this to 1, 1, 1, and I want to get 0, right? Uh, this is basically making my approximation independent of what you, what what is ui. If I add everything, if I add uh, uh, the entire function by 1 or 10,000, I shouldn't affect the second derivative, right? And uh, uh, the second row is uh, minus, uh, minus 1, 0, and 1, right? And the third row is, uh, uh, is half, 0, and half, right? Because of the halves here, uh, I already multiplied by delta x square. This should be equal to zero, zero, and one, right? Yeah. Do you see the conversion from these three rows to the uh, matrix system? Okay. Now I just uh, go and solve it. So the matrix is uh, uh, one, one, one. Minus one zero one and uh, half zero half. I'm going to backslash it with zero zero one. I need to transpose it because I want to make it a uh, column vector. I get one minus two and one, right? So the solution to this is C one, C two, C three. Uh, all of them multiplied by delta x square is equal to one minus 2 and 1. Yes? I'm wondering why you pulled out the delta x squared from the first two rows. I actually didn't. I just, uh, because I know the first two rows are supposed to be 0, right? It doesn't matter if I multiply them by delta x or delta x squared. So I'm not really pulling out anything. I just, uh, I know they have to be 0, so I just uh, can 
multiply whatever constant I, I, I want to the first two rows. All right. Okay, um, so coincidentally, because C1 is equal to C2, this row actually gets canceled out, right? C1 equal to C2. So, I mean, this is not uh, by design, but uh, just uh, by pure luck. I get a scheme that is more accurate than I aimed for, right? So, uh, that's actually something good about uh, uh, the second order derivatives. All right. So essentially, if I do the error analysis, I divide everything by delta x squared to get the error. My error just lies in this. So I get a second order scheme that is O delta x squared. Because I have O delta x fourth and divide everything by delta x squared, I get O delta x squared. All right. So basically, if you plug in this uh, C1, C2, C3 into this, what I get is the final uh, conclusion is the second order derivative is approximated by ui minus 1 minus 2 ui so that's the minus 2 plus ui plus 1 that's the final one or divided by delta x squared that's my second order derivative All right.